Avond Astrup joined the American Robert Peary's expedition to northern Greenland in 1891. The kite reached Whale Sound on 23rd of July, and the winter quarter, Red Cliff House, was quickly established in McCormick Bay. Astrup studied the Etta Inuit and learned the use of fur clothing, igloos, sledge and dog handling, and survival in the harsh winter climate. On the 3rd of May 1892, four men and 20 dogs set out in an attempt to cross the Greenland ice sheet. Having travelled 240 kilometres, Peary and Astrup continued alone with 13 dogs. On the 4th of July, they found themselves on top of Navy Cliff, looking down on Independence Fjord over a thousand metres below. They had proved that Greenland was an island. The return journey was tough due to sparse rations, but a successful musk ox hunt saved the two men and their dogs. During the three-month journey, they had travelled more than 2,000 kilometres, four times longer than Nansen's crossing four years earlier, and charted the previously unknown northwestern part of Greenland. During the expedition, Astrup had pioneered the development of ski and dog sledge techniques and started planning for a life exploring the polar regions. Within a year, Astrup joined Peary for another expedition in northern Greenland. In 1894, Astrup and the Inuit Kolotengva explored and charted the northern part of Melville Bay during a 1300 km sledge journey, which led to him receiving the Merchantson Award from the Royal Geographical Society in London. During the winters back in Norway, he could be seen practicing sledding with his five Greenland dogs and specially made sled on the ice of the Oslo Fjord, where today the Fram Museum is located. Even Dastrup was an excellent writer and sketch artist, and the story of his expeditions and studies of the Inuit is still available in his popular book, With Peary Near the Pole. Avond Astrup received a hero's welcome both times he returned to Norway. At 21, he was awarded the St. Olaf's Order for his achievements, and is still the youngest person to receive that honour. He died in 1895, only 24 years old. But his name lives on in several geographical locations in Greenland, Norway and the Antarctic.